This video is brought to you by Patreon provider Kyle. Let's see if I can keep this under 10 minutes. We're going to start with the side by side because this is a bit of a difference between these two. The 6X will be on the left for the entirety of the video, the 8X on the right. If you didn't watch the full reviews on either of these, please go do so because you're going to get a lot more insight. From what we see here, the 6X is much more forgiving at 6X as opposed to the 8X is at 8X. With the 8X at 6X, it's still a little bit tighter than what the 6X is at its maximum magnification. I also just love how much less of the scope body you see with the 6X, even though the 8X does have a slightly larger field of view, which you can clearly see here. Image on these things inside 30 yards is going to vary because a 6X at max and an 8X at max is going to be completely different, and thus not really relative in most cases. But if you're curious about how they perform side by side, here you go. The illumination is clearly brighter on the 8X, but not by much. Like I said in the review, probably about one extra click on the dial. Now, there are people out there that will say, instead of running a 2032 battery, you run, what is it, a, a 2016 or a 1016 battery, and you stack them. That would be effectively doubling the voltage going into the emitter. I don't necessarily uh, want to do that because the last thing I want to do is destroy my optic, then go to send it back for a warranty claim, and then they say, yeah, but you overcharged this and um, you violated warranty claims because if it's rated for a 2032 battery at 3 volts, that's what you stick in there. As a result, I don't really take too much. I don't take that. I take it with a grain of salt because ultimately I just want my optic to perform well. Here, the 1X on the 6X is much flatter than it is on the 8X. The 1X has a much more forgiving eye box, a much flatter and clearer image as I feel, and the 8X just gets a little bit too close to my eye. I don't ever really feel comfortable behind it. I always prefer an optic that I can have farther away from my eye as opposed to right on top of it. And between these two, that's the 6X over the 8X. There's gonna be a lot of things I like about the 6X more. But another thing to add to the list is that the image does not shift from inside the optic to outside. Take a look at the berm on the back or even the concrete wall. It's a little hard to see here, but the 8X shifts a significant amount more as opposed to the 6X, which means that when you get behind it, it feels a lot more natural to your eye than the 8X does because it feels like everything is shifting around you. And for me, the line of sight is not perfect. At 30 yards, the 8X was a little bit uh, of a disappointment, but here at 50 yards, that completely changes its game. So if you're wondering what the minimum distance to use this 8X is, it's at 50 yards to get a really crisp and clear image, which is more than fantastic. If you wanted to shoot groups or at least wonder how your gun's doing, it'll be perfectly fine at 50 yards. But the eye box has to go to the one to six. Granted, these are very budget friendly optics, but the 6X really is that little bit extra like, wow, this is really, really nice. Whereas the 8X, it's really hard to get just right. And keep in mind, all of my optics are set up so that you can see the full range of motion through them, whether it be at 1X or 8X, you don't have to worry about getting any sort of shadows through the image, which is why you'll always see more of the scope body on the 8X as opposed to the 6X, because it will shift that little extra bit. As we increase the magnification to four and then six on both of them, with the exception of the 8X being able to go to eight, but I don't go there, the 6X always seems a little bit easier and more forgiving to get behind. So of course, that's gonna go to the 6X. I am a fan of one to fours because the glass isn't stressed out that much. And usually one X is excellent and the four X is actually still pretty good by comparison. Showcasing that shift through the image on both of these optics, take a look at the wood at the very top of the image. On the one to six, it's barely shifted up, but on the one to eight, it shifted up like a foot plus. It's a big, big difference. Ultimately, if you're deciding between these two optics and these two optics alone, if you really feel that you have the need to have that little bit extra magnification and you're willing to sacrifice overall image quality at the extremes, because the One X has a lot of fish eyeing, you see a lot more of the scope body, you see a lot more shadowing if you're off perfect center on it as opposed to the 6X. So if you could justify to yourself like, hey, this 8X is exactly what I want, it's honestly still not a bad scope. The one to six is vastly superior. And again, these are the budget, budget, budget of the budget that Primary Arms puts out there. But these are both still really good. The shortcomings with the reticle, yeah, it gets a little bit small at 1X, but I had no real issues with it. 
The donut lines up very well, even on five inch black bullseyes at 50 yards, and that's fine for me. I do wish it did have German posts or some nice heavy duplex lines just to help pull me towards the center. Because again, we don't have daytime bright illumination. It's This is as bright as it gets on both of these, but that's still fine for most cases. Anyway, if you're going to be going with either of these for the price, I don't think you could really go wrong. They do feel really cheap in hand. I think I'd much still rather prefer a second focal plane for around the same price that felt better. Usually it would give me a better package overall. But between these two, it's clearly the one to six for me. But for you, if you like the one to eight, guess what? Get the one to eight, enjoy it. And if not, throw down another rifle and upgrade to something else. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. Kyle, thank you so much for sending these in. See you again next time. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon providers. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. If you would like to join my Patreon but can't, I completely understand. But you're more than welcome to check out the affiliate links in the description below to help me in other ways. Again, thank you very much for watching.